a new poll by the New York Times and Siena College shows Vice President Kamala Harris leading former President Donald Trump by four percentage points in three swing states, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. As we get closer to the election, we want to address the biggest differences between the two presidential hopefuls. And today, we're tackling their tax policies. Steve Rosenthal joins us now. Steve is a senior fellow at Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center. And still with me is Yahoo Finance's senior columnist, Rick Newman. Steve, there's still a lot we don't know about Harris and her plan, particularly when it comes to tariffs. We do know that Trump wants to hit China with a 60% tariff. Biden also had some aggressive tariff ambitions. But from what we do know so far, what are the biggest differences in the tax plans of these two candidates? Well, we can both look backwards and forwards. Uh, backwards, uh, Trump and Harris disagree about the Trump tax reform of 2017. Uh, much of it is set to expire 2025, and Trump wants to extend it. Uh, Harris in the past uh, has suggested repealing all of it. And uh, that tax cut package had very large uh, cuts for corporations and for high income individuals. And there's a face off there. Going forward, we know relatively little about uh, Vice President Harris's plans, uh, but as Rick uh, just suggested, uh, with res respect to the corporate initiative, we would expect uh, Harris to continue a lot of the bias, uh, a lot of the Biden-Harris uh, proposals, which involve a lot of taxing the wealthy and high income individuals. Hey, Steve, um, we have now heard Kamala Harris come out in favor of a Donald Trump idea, which is that there should be no income tax on tips. Um, so uh, two questions on that. Uh, that would, uh, Congress would have to pass a law that making that change. Is there any chance that Congress would ever pass a law like that? And how much of this is just politics trying to play to uh, people who earn a lot of tips in swing states like Nevada? Well, uh, Rick, surprise uh, to say, but politics plays a big role during a campaign. And oh. we're in a season uh, with, with tax policies uh, being proposed uh, that, in my view, uh, make very little sense. Uh, now, could Congress enact um, th th this exemption from TIPS? It's possible. Uh, I used to work for Congress helping to draft tax rules, and it's really hard to draft a sensible tax rule to exempt tips. How do you separate tips from wages? And how do you stop a whole bunch of other employees asking to be compensated in tips? Uh, and so uh, could Congress do it? Maybe. Uh, the, the price tag uh, could be something like $200 billion. And then the cost for the rest of us is to make up both that $200 billion. And then uh, do we really want more employees requesting tips uh, rather than wages, like our grocery tellers, our plumbers, uh, all sorts of service sector employees might start asking for tips. And frankly, I've been getting sort of tired of being asked for tips uh, every time I, I buy anything. And so uh, you know, I think this idea has a lot of problems to it. It may yet go forward because there's interest expressed by both presidential candidates, uh, but there are a lot of problems to work through. And Steve, you mentioned the Trump tax cuts. They expire in 2025. As you said, President Trump will likely extend them if he were to win the election in November, where uh, Harris would likely repeal them. What would that mean for everyday Americans if the current cuts are repealed? Well, if the current cuts are repealed, uh, certainly for high income taxpayers, uh, they, would, they would face higher income tax rates. Uh, for other taxpayers, um, middle income taxpayers, they would see the standard deduction. I think that'd be the largest item. Their standard deduction lowered. It was doubled in 2017. However, uh, from a, the tax standpoint of high income ver versus low income, I think high income taxpayers would see a lot more of a hit than low income taxpayers and middle class taxpayers. Steve, what, are the, uh, what do you view as the likelihood that we could see some kind of tax pa package that would repeal the cap on state and local taxes, which a lot of Democrats want to do. Well, Rick, that state and lo local tax uh, cap 
is set for expiration in 2025. And so if Congress ends up not doing anything and all the individual items, both the tax cuts and the tax increases expire, well, then it could go away. Now, if it if in fact the tax uh, cuts and increases the individual items of the of, of the 2017 tax reform measure are extended, well, there'll be an argument over the SALT deduction. And I think there's both Republicans and Democrats who'd like to see the cap, if not increased, uh, completely eliminated. We'll see. I think I think it's touch and go. Steve Rosenthal, Senior Fellow at Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center. Thank you so much for joining us. And our, thanks to our very own Rick Newman as well. See yeah. ya.